With Black Friday happening today and many founders ready to make their libraries a little less incomplete, I will share today with you the books that helped me on my own founder journey in the hopes that your Black Friday budget has room for a few of these books. Welcome to the Bootstrap Founder. This episode is sponsored by the folks over at acquire.com. More on that later. Now, let's take a walk through my bookshelf. I will share my personal library grouped into four broad categories today. One is entrepreneurship, then business strategy, marketing, and customer interaction. And I will say what each book has brought to my own journey. You will find that I will omit the books that everybody else anywhere recommends all of the time. Right? There's not going to be any lean startup or no zero to one, no hard thing about hard things. And that's not because those books aren't great, but they're just not as instructive for indie founders and creators as they are for people who follow the whole venture capital route. Great for them, mid for us. The books that I will talk about today are books that I have actually read and found to be useful for someone who wants to build this kind of self-funded, self-controlled, and ultimately self-empowering business. What I will share with you today is my own experience, but I think it can be yours as well. And reading is just really dipping into somebody else's mind anyway. So let's dive into the most important category first. Let's start with entrepreneurship. We will start with Company of One by Paul Jarvis. Now, Paul, ironically, is running a company of two with Jack Ellis at the moment. Their privacy-focused Fathom Analytics is a SaaS that is a spectacular example of staying small but doing big things. And that's what this book is about. And I love listening to it because Paul narrated his own audiobook. That's the way an indie founder does this kind of stuff. And in this book, you will find a lot of knowledge from Paul's personal founder experience. And from my perspective, those books are the best and most instructive. And the same goes for The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. It's half manual and half memoir. And that kind of makes it somewhat outdated. It's a pretty old book compared to others in this field. The version that I read a few years ago already contained a lot of recommendations and links to products and websites that have long since vanished. But it's worth looking beyond that because if you're new to indie hacking, this book will reliably blow your mind no matter how old it is. It did for me. After reading the four hour work week, I finally understood just how powerful owning your own time is. And Ferris doesn't hold back in the book. He offers concepts on outsourcing and automating and pragmatic problem solving, all of which are pretty pivotal for new entrepreneurs. This is probably one of the first books you should read as a founder. I did that, and it opened up completely new paradigms for me. It's really valuable to start reading this book because it just you know opened the surface for other things to come in. Life Profitability by Adi PNR is another book that came in and planted itself on that surface. Adi explores the balance between life needs and business goals, which is a core activity for lifestyle entrepreneurs. I remember having a physical response to this book when I read it. It was very strong. When Adi laid out in the book that you have to completely reimagine your way of prioritizing goals, I felt it. What is enough is the question that I've, I needed to answer. What do I want? What do I need? How is it aligned? That's the kind of thinking you're going to get as you read this book. And the book comes with templates too. It's a really important read for founders who are taking their destiny into their own hands. And part of this reprioritizing is actively reducing complexity. The Minimalist Entrepreneur by Sahil Lavinia will help you with that. And Sahil has been building sizable software businesses in the past, and they were not without controversy. I had him on this podcast when Gumroad, his most recent business, did a massive price change in the past, and the whole community of creators just exploded and complained. But look at where he is now. Gumroad is profitable. People have returned after seeking supposed Supposedly greener pastures, and Sahil's building a strong business in public. He knows that just a few things matter, and he knows which things, and he explains this all in the book. It's a short read with significant lessons. And all these books I just mentioned are overall lifestyle books for the entrepreneur. I'm more, more focused on the founder than the business. So 
Let's dive into the ones that affect how you run your operation, not just why. Let's talk about business strategy books. My number one here, Easy, Build to Sell by John Warlow. It's solidly my number one book in this category. This is one of those books where I have a before the book and an after the book kind of life. When I read Build to Sell, I knew what I had done wrong in all my prior attempts to build a business. And the fun thing is, Warlow doesn't even talk about software businesses where my experience came from. And yet, any software founder will find massive value in this book. It teaches what you need to know about structuring your business and your goals. And that's the part that I didn't think about. I attribute my life-changing exit to the frameworks presented in this book, which is why I started reading all of Warlow's other books. The Automatic Customer by John Warlow is an equally impactful book in my life. It focuses on subscription business models. It talks about how you can make recurring money from a business. And again, not just the boring old SaaS monthly fee kind of business model. In this book, you will find nine ways to monetize whatever kind of business you're building on a recurring basis. It's super helpful if you want to be inspired by other industries and not just your own kind of myopic view on the software business world. One of the models in there, for example, is the insurance model, which I rarely ever see used in SaaS, but it works and I've seen people use it in SaaS successfully. People pay for not having to think about stuff. Yeah, that's the kind of well-exemplified insight that you will find in the automatic customer. And finally, The Art of Selling Your Business by John Warlow. Yeah, I'm a fan. <laughs> John's third book is an amazing guide to any founder looking into selling their business, which, if you ask me, is something you should do from day one. And particularly when you don't have to sell, you should think about it. Think about it. Prepare for it. Because preparing and executing a successful business exit these are things that are best learned earlier than at the last minute. And since we're talking overall strategy here, The E-Myth Revisited by Michael E. Gerber is another one of these read-before-you-start kind of books. It explains the myth of technical skills being sufficient to build a business. You know, the thing we all believe. If you're a good developer, you can build a software business. Well, it turns out that's not enough. And Gerber has many intriguing stories that provide you with processes, processes which we implemented in our SaaS on our way to $55,000 MRR. This is, yet again, not about SaaS. It's about building a functional business of any kind. But a book that is totally about SaaS is the SaaS Playbook by Rob Walling, who was on this podcast this week talking about the things in the book. And it's the most recent one on the list. Rob's insight into numerous cohorts and Tiny Seed, his accelerator, has given him something a lot of founders would love to have, data. Rob has the numbers, and his advice in this book is built upon that foundation of data. If you want to start an indie-funded business with potential, this is the book. And you might want to look into Start Small, Stay Small by Rob Walling as well. He wrote this a decade or so ago, and it's still pretty valid for indie founders. But let's jump into marketing real quick at this point. The most important marketing book to read here is one that doesn't say marketing book on the cover. It's Obviously Awesome by April Dunford. More than anything, fresh founders mess up their positioning by not even knowing what positioning is. And April is the expert in this field. She'll make sure that you start your marketing efforts right from the right perspective, from the right position. As more and more indie businesses just proliferate all around us, you will benefit from being clear who you are, who your product is for, and who it's not for. And with real human beings at the center of most indie marketing, be it like word of mouth or referrals or just mind share, you will benefit immensely from permission marketing by Seth Godin. In fact, by all of the marketing books written by Seth Godin, if you can. Seth has been sharing insights into online digital marketing for decades. I think he even invented the field. So if you need a primer why and how we market, read Seth Godin. And another one of these, before I read it and after I read it books, for me at least, was Hooked by Nir Eyal. It teaches you how to build habit-forming products. And that's a bit controversial, the book itself and the concept, because the techniques described in this book have been used to addict a significant number of people to all kinds of unhealthy products. But you can 
also use it for good. I think you should use it for good. The hook cycle that he introduces in the book is a framework that I'm using in all my products now that I know it's power to make people retain. You will create high retention products with happy customers that use it for their own benefit if you imp implement it well. And this brings us to dealing with customers, the last segment of my little bookshelf walkthrough here, customer interaction. A rarely recommended book here is Farm Don't Hunt by Guy Nearpass, and I think that's a shame. Value nurturing is a concept that every founder should understand innately and really know, and who would want to be ignorant of nourishing customer relationships in the world where trust and having relationships with customers is becoming more and more important? Well, that's what this thin but powerful book will teach you. When you have a solid product that can really help your customers, this is how you show up with extra impact. And before you get to that point, you have to learn a lot from your customers to build your business, to build the product, to build the features. Deploy Empathy by Michelle Hansen is my favorite book for customer discovery and exploration. This great little gem offers actual scripts for customer interviews, which I love. It doesn't just tell you the why, it guides you through the how with literally the questions that you need to ask. And finally, read The Mom Test by Rob Fitzpatrick. Won't take you more than an hour, absolutely worth it. Rob wrote a guide on communicating effectively with your customers without falling into the traps of asking the wrong people the wrong kind of questions, like asking your mom if she likes your business. A lot of founders ask their customers if they want new features. Well, of course they do. They're free, right? Why wouldn't they? But that's not how you learn what they need. That's how you ruin your product. Rob teaches you to ask better questions to the right people. And that's absolutely worth the read here. And that's it, my top 15. There are dozens, if not hundreds of other books that founders can learn from, but you would never get through them all, that whole list of hundreds of books before the AI singularity takes over the world, so don't even try. I will tell you though, of two more books, my books. I wrote Zero to Sold, in 2020 as a compendium, a guide through every stage of starting, running, and selling a SaaS business. You'll find this rather sizable book to be a great manual that you can reference while you build your own thing. At any stage, there's going to be something in this book for you. It contains my personal experiences, many anecdotes from failing a lot until I had a breakthrough and a life-changing software business exit. Everything from start to finish. My second book, The Embedded Entrepreneur, dives into a smaller part of this journey, starting a business by understanding the needs, the challenges, and the desires of a community that you're already part of or want to be part of. If you want to build an audience and a legacy while building impactful products, The Embedded Entrepreneur is for you. Now, ultimately, you could start and build and run and eventually sell a business without ever having read any of these books. But why play the game on hard mode when dozens of people have shared their hard-earned lessons in easily consumed books, right? Enjoy your Black Friday book purchasing frenzy. And that's it for today. I will now briefly thank the sponsor for this show, which is Acquire.com, the place that we all want to end up with our software businesses because we get to sell them. Right? Imagine this. You're a founder who's built a really, really solid SaaS product. You've read all these books that I just talked to you about. You implemented everything you learned. You built this business. You acquired customers. It's getting really consistent monthly recurring revenue because you chose the right business model. You're living the dream of the indie SaaS founder. The problem is you reach the ceiling. You're not growing for whatever reason. Maybe you can't focus. Maybe you don't have the skills or maybe you just don't care and you feel stuck in your business with your business. What should you do? Well, the story that I would like to hear at this point is that you buckled down, you reignited your fire, you started working on the business, not just in the business, and all those things like audience building and marketing happen, you do sales, outreach, and six months down the road, you made millions, you tripled everything, your revenue is up, and you have this incredibly successful business that is just a talk of the town. Wouldn't that be nice? Reality, obviously, is not as simple as this. And the situation that you might find yourself in is different for every single founder who's facing this crossroad. But too many times, the story here ends up being the same story, and that's one of inaction and stagnation, until the business itself becomes less and less valuable over time, or worse, completely worthless. So if you find yourself here in this funk, or you 
think your story is likely headed down a similar road, I would consider a third option at this time, and that is selling your business on acquire.com. Because capitalizing on the value of your time today is a pretty smart move for any indie founder. You only have 24 hours in a day. And do you want to spend them doing something you don't like, or do you want to make money selling the thing to somebody else? Acquire.com, free to list. They've helped hundreds of founders already. Go to try.acquire.com slash Arvid and see for yourself if this is the right option for you. Thank you so much for listening to the Bootstrap Founder today. You can find me on Twitter at Avid Kahl, A-R-V-I-D-K-A-H-L. And you find my books and my Twitter course there too. If you want to support me on this show, use uh, the Black Friday coupon code BFF for 50% off. Let me just throw this out here. If you're one of the few people that actually listen to this, you just got 50% off. But I also really value if you subscribe to my YouTube channel or you get the podcast in your player of choice and leave a rating and a review by going to ratethispodcast.com slash founder. It makes a massive difference if you show up there because then this will show up in other people's feeds and that's where it should be. Any of this will help the show. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful day and bye-bye.